Somewhere behind the sun's fierce glare, three I Atlas is racing faster than almost anything we've ever seen. It's alone in the heat, sliding past the point of no return, 136 million miles from the star that pulls us all. This isn't the beginning of its story. You already know what it is, an interstellar traveler carrying fragments of another sky. But this, this is the moment that matters, the final hours before the sun decides what survives. We can't see it now. The light is too strong, flooding every telescope, drowning the object in brightness. From Earth, it's gone. And that silence feels almost personal. Somewhere in that glare, three eye atlas is being tested. If it stays stable, the universe keeps its secrets. But if the light shifts, if the trajectory bends, or if the glow returns changed, then something deeper is happening. Something that doesn't fit the pattern. But the real truth won't come from what we see. It will come from what the light says when it comes back. Its brightness, its color, its polarization. That's where the story will speak. The sun doesn't need to destroy to leave a mark. At this distance, around 1.36 astronomical units, the heat isn't enough to vaporize a solid body of this size, but it is enough to test it. 3i Atlas is accelerating toward perihelion at nearly 68 kilometers per second. That's over 240,000 kilometers per hour, a speed that almost no object in our solar system ever reaches without falling directly into the sun. And as it moves, so does the pressure thermal, gravitational, mechanical. It's a stress test at interstellar scale. If the core is solid, it may only scar, but if it's fractured, layered, or held together by fragile chemistry, the next 48 hours could change everything. A sudden shift in brightness after perihelion could mean outgassing, ice breaking free, or layers peeling away. A faint dimming might hint at the loss of reflective surfaces. A rise in brightness could suggest fresh, volatile, rich patches exposed by the sun's heat. Each curve in the light tells a story, quiet, distant, but precise. And it's not just the brightness we'll read. The path matters. If the trajectory changes even slightly, just enough to drift off the model, it could point to jets of gas pushing from inside, releasing stored energy in unpredictable bursts. That's normal for comets, but it's also where speculation creeps in because a deviation without cause or time too cleanly starts to look like something else. A maneuver, perhaps, hidden beneath solar cover. It's a stretch, but it's a stretch people are watching for. Then there's the tail. Before the blackout, it already showed signs of strange behavior. A segment briefly angled toward the sun instead of away from it. Something rare, even among the weirdest comets. If that pattern repeats after perihelion, if the tail curls in odd directions or splits into irregular forms, we might be seeing something we don't fully understand. Dust grain sizes, electric charges, or interactions with the solar wind that don't match local models. It's here, in these shapes and shadows, that the object reveals what it's really made of. So we wait for a flicker, for a turn, for the thin stream of data that will escape the glare. And in that silence, we ask, when the pressure peaks, what gives? What cracks? What holds? There's something strange about the way light reflects off 3i Atlas. Before the glare swallowed it, astronomers recorded an unusual signature, a deep negative polarization. That means the sunlight bouncing off its dust wasn't behaving like it does with most comets. It was dimmer, more scattered, suggesting a surface made of dark, porous material or grains aligned in ways we rarely see. And that's the part that matters now, because when it comes out of the light, that polarization could shift. And if it does, we'll know something changed inside the heat. If the extreme negative value holds, then the structure of the dust, the irregular clumps, the chaotic grains, may have survived the sun's heat unchanged. If it softens, we might be looking at a surface smoothed by thermal stress, or a different population of particles released in the heat. But if the polarization deepens even more, it could mean new jets formed, spraying darker material into space. Each of those paths reveals a different kind of resilience or damage. But that's just the light. The chemistry beneath it is also in question. Before perihelion, 
3i Atlas already defied some expectations. We detected nickel, but barely any iron, an imbalance that's hard to explain, since both elements tend to travel together in material formed near stars. That could be a clue to how this object formed or how its surface behaves when heated. Or, as some whisper, it could be something more intentional, a layered structure, a designed blend, a surface engineered to survive a journey between stars. That's a reach, but the data's coming. Then there's the tail, already unpredictable. It began forming farther from the sun than expected, with CO2 likely driving the early release of gas and dust. And at times, it didn't point where it should have. Most comets trail their tails away from the sun, pushed by solar radiation. But 3i Atlas seemed to resist that. Briefly, it leaned forward toward the heat. Some say that's a sign of massive particles, too heavy to be pushed back. Others call it a signature, an anomaly, maybe even thrust. It's speculation, yes, but it's exactly the kind of detail the post-perihelion data could confirm or shatter. Because once it clears the glare, we'll see the tail again. We'll see whether it follows the models or breaks them, whether the light it reflects tells a story of survival or something stranger. The facts are clear, but around the edges of light and silence, speculation grows. Whenever something drifts in from another star, something we can't fully explain, the mind reaches for patterns, some scientific, some not. Three, I Atlas, with its precise trajectory and timing, has become a magnet for questions that official updates don't always answer. And as we lose visual contact during this critical moment, that vacuum gets filled with more than just waiting. One theory making rounds is simple, almost cinematic, that perihelion provides the perfect blind spot. That 3i Atlas could be adjusting course right now, using the solar glare as cover for a maneuver. The object hasn't shown any such behavior so far. Its orbit has matched predictions with uncanny precision. But conspiracy lives in the gaps. If, after it re-emerges, the object appears slightly off track, the usual explanation would be natural. Gas jets triggered by heat, pushing it gently. But if the shift is smooth, sharp, or timed too cleanly, well, that's when the comments will light up. Some already call it controlled. Others point to the tail. Before the blackout, it briefly pointed forward toward the sun. That's rare. Some say it's due to heavy particles or solar wind interference, but others see it differently. They see directionality, intent, like thrust, as if this isn't just a rock and ice relic, but something sending exhaust. That view has no data behind it, yet, but it doesn't stop people from speculating that we're watching a machine, not a comet. And then there's the light itself, the polarization anomaly, deeply negative, consistent, strange. A few voices online suggest it could be the effect of engineered material, designed to scatter light in ways we don't expect. A mesh, a layered hull, a cloaking skin that only looks like comet dust until you watch it too closely. Most scientists dismiss that, and they should, but they also admit they've never seen this signature in a comet before. So the door, even if barely, stays open. The chemical mystery adds fuel. Nickel was found early, but iron, its usual companion, was barely there. Could this be a natural result of selective sublimation? Maybe. Or maybe this is what processed material looks like. Something formed not just by time and heat, but by design. If the pattern repeats after perihelion or intensifies, we'll need new models. Or, at the very least, new questions. And finally, the simplest theory that the blackout itself isn't just natural geometry, but intentional silence. A claim that agencies are hiding updates suppressing imagery, keeping the most crucial hours away from public view. The truth is simpler. The object is in solar conjunction, close enough to the sun, that telescopes from Earth can't observe it without being blinded. But conspiracy isn't about truth, it's about trust. And in a moment like this, when light is blocked and the stakes feel cosmic, trust runs thin. We don't endorse these theories, but we acknowledge them, because when 3i Atlas steps out of the light, Every pixel will be scrutinized, every fluctuation, every spectral line, every angle of its tail. And if the numbers come back clean, that's one kind of answer. But if they don't, if something breaks the pattern, 
then this corner of speculation might become the center of attention. Soon the glare will thin, the silence will break, and for the first time in days, we'll be able to look again. The light will return, faint, pixelated, distant, but it will speak, not in images, not yet, first in numbers. The brightness will either hold or fall, the trajectory will stay or slip, the tail will steady or twist. Each of those shifts, no matter how small, is a sentence in a story we've been trying to read since three eye atlas crossed into our sky. This is the moment when theories meet data, when speculation faces reflection, and when the sun, without saying a word, leaves a mark we can finally measure. Whatever comes back, stable or cracked, dimmer or brighter, will change how we talk about this object, about interstellar visitors, about what drifts in from the dark. Some of you believe it's just ice and dust, some believe it's something else entirely. Whatever side you're on, now is the time to write it down. Make your call. Survive. Shatter. Dimension. When 3 Eye Atlas steps out of the light, we'll compare the signal to your prediction. And somewhere between the numbers and the silence, we might find something new. If this is the kind of story you follow, slow, quiet, and just a little strange, leave a like to help others find it. And if you want to stay, when the light returns, Subscribe, because this isn't the end. It's just the pause before something answers. Until then, we drift with it, into heat, into silence, into the verdict waiting in sunlight.